I thought I'd have that recovered. So, screwed up compressor. I do have another rotary right here. It's a little smaller capacity, it's a 115 volt. Might be tempted to hook a VFD up to it uh, for shits and giggles. Stay tuned on that. And when this unit was running, you know, I kind of almost wonder if uh, this, you know, pierce and weld job that I do to put in my little Schraders, or wonder if it, maybe I got some solder inside of it. Nope. Absolutely perfect. <laughs> Probably better than factory. Got the vacuum pump running on it now. Didn't take too much to swap on this other compressor. Um, one thing to note, you know, I'm sure everybody's heard about these things by now, but these swage bits, this set goes up to 7 eighths. These things are just absolutely awesome. So basically I'm able to just screw around, experiment, and not use one single copper fitting. Pretty much everything on here is just recycled parts. Um, scrap pieces of copper I've already had, you know, um, and just reusing pieces that were on the unit I took apart, you know, my scrap unit. And every one of these fittings is just a swage joint. Here, here, there, 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 down there, everything is. So. Even, even this is like a double swage joint. So this is 3 8 copper. So I swage the 3 8 bell end, and it's still not quite big enough when I oval it to fit these two little quarters in there. So then what I do is uh, run up to the 5 8 which makes it really thin though. So kind of starts cracking the copper. But for stuff like this, where I'm just going to kind of go over the whole thing with hard silk floss anyway, that's just fine. So this has been double swaged up to 3 8 to bell it, and then 5 8 to bell it out to the 5 8 side. And it actually went over it was a little loose and I had to crimp it, you know, around these two ports that I go through. So and then, uh, hopefully you just gotta hope sometimes that you don't put so much solder in there that you, in, with the heat into this pipe that solder won't flow down and then back into the inter <laughs> inner diameter of the pipe. Because that could actually shut off like one circuit. That really sucks. But hopefully we get some good action. I'm gonna fire this up shortly. Okay. Guys, we're kind of taken back to the beginning when I was first testing these uh, units <laughs> with a submergible pump in a bucket. Looks like we got the compressor running, we got about 64.8 degrees, about 65 degrees, a five gallon bucket. And see the pressures there. I think I got refrigerant approximate, I think I got about a pound, a over a pound in here, a pound and a half maybe. R410. Hopefully no water drips on anything important. So this is a single phase compressor. So right now we're going to run it normal single phase. I already clicked it on a few minutes ago before I hooked the water up and it just it worked like normal. Same metering device everything that I try to use with that other rotary compressor. So here we go. Really quiet compressor. So I'm sure the head pressure is going to be shite right now because of the water being 65 degrees. I just feel like cold ass air coming out of there. I wish I had a thermometer with me. Um, one thermometer I'm using is down in the water. Water's already gone up two degrees. When did it start? 125? But it definitely feels like an evaporator now, like it's, it's blowing out cold air. I really probably should go upstairs and grab my little stick thermometer at least. Go upstairs to get my thermometer. We'll see what the uh, ambient air temperature is. Probably low 60s. Five gallons of water has already went up from, what was it, 65 to 74 right now? It's in just a few minutes. Head pressures are nice. Now it's only at 260. This will be the first time. No, I'll take that back. Not the first time I've done R410. I did the experiment with this compressor in the portable AC unit that it came in. I kind of adapted. So this evaporator would be a little bigger than the one that was in it. So. Oh, I'm actually getting a nice cool suction line now. Remember before it sucked? So I've got 10 degree superheat. Oh, that's nice. Now this coil could potentially freeze in the winter. Five-ish. 
to come over here. I don't know if it's going to stay. Just want to kind of see what the air is like. Water's already up to 77. So far, this is a, a really good test so far. Air temperature's still dropping. What did I say? Was it 65? It's still dropping. Am I going to get a 20 degree split out of this bitch? Suction pressure, of course, you know, for looks a little on the low side. But cool temperature, I mean, what do you expect? Subcooling looks pretty good. I don't want to add any more refrigerant. You'd think you'd be worried about something like this freezing up, but it doesn't stay below. It hardly ever gets down to freezing here. And the heat, water heater runs like an hour and then will shut off and not heat again, you know, for hours usually. So any ice that starts building up on that sucker would probably just melt off from the ambient air. 47, still dropping 46. So we're getting 18, 19 degree split temperature. Everything looks pretty textbook right now other than the you know, suction's just a little low, but normal still. Just know for what you uh, would think you'd be looking at if you were checking the AC unit. You know, normal operating temperatures. So. I do have the water cho speed choked down just a little bit too. It's not a full speed because this uh, submersible pump actually can move. I forget how many gallons per minute I calculated. I think it was a good six or seven. I don't know. It was, so I have it choked down. I don't want it uh, going full speed. You see, there's still a lot of crimps and kinks, I should say, in all this poly tubing I pulled out of my storage container. I haven't used it in months. Water's already up to 82 degrees. Yeah, Spire's about 47 degrees. 290, that's like nothing. We'll see what this hits when the water temperature gets up into the 100, though. 100 plus. As long as it's not over 500, I'm not going to sweat it. So, what, are we going to run in five minutes? Water's went up almost... 20 degrees. It's gone up 18, 19 degrees now from the, uh, what was it, 65? Got over 300 on the high side now. Nice and quiet. Now, this is a single phase 115 volt compressor. Um, somebody told me they hooked up a VFD to a single phase compressor and ran it. Like permanently. Now, nah, sounds pretty sketchy. <laughs> the windings aren't uh, even, you know, um, like a three phase, you know, three windings would be but pretty interesting. I'd be almost curious to uh, hook this up to the three phase um, output of the VFD. So leaving it at the 120 hertz max. See, because the way, we're, the way you set the uh, settings in here, using the book. He set it for max frequency 120 hertz, max voltage um, 240 or 230 or whatever it is, right? At the 120 hertz, and then you set your middle frequency, which is 60 hertz, and the middle frequency voltage way down at like 115 or 120. And guess what? The pseudo sine wave, which is just pulse width modulation, those short steps, big steps, short steps, and then reverse polarity, short steps, big steps. It just makes the current. It's always the same peak voltage coming out of it which is the voltage of the capacitor bus which is 330 volts but it's the duty cycle and it's just it. and through the windings and everything you get a pseudo you know sine wave current flow through a motor and it works it works so uh technically as long as hook you know didn't screw up the compressor from being a you know wiring a single phase to the three phase output other than that where I have it set now, if I hooked that up and just didn't go above 60 hertz, it would run, you know, the current and everything. It might work. It might. I'm tempted to hook it up just to see what it does. I've already ran other motors that were single phase on the VFDs, like some blower motors and stuff, and they pulled um, amps that were high and not efficient at all. But I never fried one yet. Or the two motors I think I tried. But if this works really good, maybe I don't want to take the chance because I might just run this as 115 volt to heat the water and see. And who knows, maybe it'll take too long. I don't know. Uh, the thing is, my water heater over here 
you know, I have all the lines connected, but all it takes to make this run as a uh, OEM is just connect the wire nut. It's disconnected inside here, and guess what? It's running off the elements. So, so while I move this thing out there, or hook that other one up, I would, you know, I'm going to get that one set and get the holes drilled, and then when I'm ready to switch it, I'll just probably connect that power and let it run while I'm making the last adjustments. It isn't like we'll be out of hot water because all I ever have to do is just hook up that element. But this would be a, another experiment. Maybe it'll heat up just fine because the thing is, um, this is a two-ton compressor in here, but I don't run it um, at 60 hertz. I'm running it quite a ways under. Now it does have a lot bigger coil. It is a three-ton coil, but I'm running the blower real slow and everything. So... That thing never dripped any condensate water out of it, by the way. Never filled the trap, never dripped any water. Even now that it's kind of cooled off, it just doesn't. Water is 97 degrees. So getting close to 100. What my head pressure have I been looking for a while? 348. Yeah. Suction pressure, see, has now come up a little more normal. So actually, in my, see my evaporation point just crossed 32 degrees. It was about to, it just did it for a second there. That suction's kind of bouncing around that threshold of running in the freezing zone. So basically, right now the water is as cool as it usually would be getting, other than unless somebody really ran the tank out. So most of the time, the evaporator wouldn't even be getting down that cold. This somebody just told absolutely ran out the water heater. So now we're about to hit 100 degrees. That about 360 psi. Discharge, getting close to 100 psi suction. Freaking pressures actually look pretty awesome. Water's warm now, of course. Not cold like it was on the other top. So it should be hot. And uh, since this would be outside. I think the thing to do would be to uh, take a cardboard box, you know, around this to perform pump and fill it with foam, spray insulation foam or whatever, that nasty shit, and just encapsulate that heat exchanger to hold the heat. Because right now, I'm the steel, you know, everything around that, I mean, it's pretty warm. It's all water temperature right there. It's just being lost to the ambient air. And it's got the fan blowing across it. The refrigerated air is being blown across the hot heat exchanger. So I'm losing some of my heat right there that, that would be going into the water. So when I insulate that with foam and everything, that'll definitely increase its performance. I haven't taken an amp reading yet. Six point nine amps. That is six point nine amps at one fifteen volt. So that's seven. So that'd be like equivalent to about three and a half amps on the two thirty volt system. So it's pretty low power usage. What I just said was three point five amps versus almost twenty amps that your element runs in the heater. All right, the water is up to one hundred six. So this capillary tube. It might actually work. A TXV would be better, but I don't know. Looking at the pressures we have right now, I don't see any reason to put one in. So it's still low 50s now. I'm holding this into the air for me. It might even still be like 49 or something. Water's up to 108. That pressure for 35. I like it. It's working good. I should check the amps just every once in a while to see what it's doing. I don't get on there. 7.4, which is 3.7. You're comparing it to a 230 volt system, that's still pretty low. 7.4 amps at 115 volts. Water's over 115, 441 on the high side. 
this thing pisses more and more as the head pressure goes up. Man, I might suck if I have to take it off. So we're already up to you know a useful temperature. It's a little hotter now. And while we're waiting for that, I'll show you guys my mess over here. Turn some power on here. Turn this thing on. Let's see how did I have this hooked up last? Oh, you can see the fans trying to turn down there. I have this as a buck boost. This is just one of those uh, reactor coils, or whatever you want to call it, not a reactor, but just like a filter, or whatever, out of a LG unit. I don't know if they were using it for buck boost, or just a, it looked like it's just a filter, because it just goes, yeah, it does, because it goes after the rectifiers, and be, and then to the capacitor, so there's no, yeah, there's no, uh, there wasn't any IGBT hooked up or anything, so I'm going to increase my pulse width modulation here. Oops, that's frequency. Uh, and I get it back to the sweet spot. I forgot I have a rotary knob over here. You go too far up on the pulse width and it just takes a dive and what that is is it meets, reaches coil saturation and the 12 volt power supply over there just trips. But this is a pretty good uh, load of this radiator fan even though it's a small one if i don't if i don't have that on i just run like this mushroom fan alone on it i could get it to like 24 volts though it'll buck boost and uh to about 24 volts but i've ran that thing for like a long time and my mosfet doesn't overheat or anything this one little small mosfet that's on there that's a pretty good output mosfet but it's just this regular you know to 220 this is the uh, photovoltaic output of the uh isolator right there Anyway, before I get distracted from the, the thing at hand, 123 degrees, 480 psi. Suction's running like a normal suction pressure. How do you like that capillary tube that I kind of just fabricated, huh? It's working like freaking perfectly right now. It's actually a little warm. Warm. The water's only taking so much heat out of it. It's got one extra pass, you know, behind the, the fan here. Yeah, it's definitely pretty warm, that liquid line. Well, what is a liquid line? We got the thermometer on there. Shit, 123? Yeah. <laughs> Expected. I could put, if it was a problem, I could put like a, uh, a, a loop of thinned uh, pipe or something, like a loop or two behind there. Just after it does the work of putting the heat in there, then it would kind of reject some from the liquid line connect the liquid line and suction line together too because that suction's freaking cold man bond those two together for a little bit do a little heat exchanger in there some cooler that wouldn't be too hard for me to take run these two lines next to each other i wouldn't even have to open the system to do that <laughs> suck them up maybe use some soft solder i don't know Water's up to 126, and we're just hitting 500 psi. Which 130? That'd be like shoot. 133. What would it? What would R410 be? What is it on a 117 degree Arizona day? It's probably higher than this. So actually, I think we're within. We're staying within. Uh, within spec, you know, as far as not torturing the compressor at this point. Now, this is with it 65 degrees out. When this thing's out in the heat in the summer, the evaporator basically would be out at 110 degrees. The, the head pressure is probably going to be too high. I probably would have to uh, modulate this fan basically just to slow it way down until um, with the temperature or something because it would freaking kill it I'm sure yeah we're about to hit our target what's it been 125 it's almost 150 so that'd be 25 minutes so 25 minutes is quite a long time to heat up 5 gallons 
But I heat again. I heated it up from. Oh, it's steaming. I heated it up from you know. 65 or whatever it was. So that I mean, you're hardly ever going to be the water heater is hardly ever going to be doing that. You take a shower, you don't run it down to 65 degrees. You run the tank down 110, 105, maybe even just 100 or so. So obviously this sucker isn't going to have the the thermal, you know, uh, add the heat that that thing up there did. But it's probably not that far behind it, just because uh, this is running at full speed. Take that off or as soon as the sucker gets done. That O-ring's not holding very well on that valve when that gets pressure gets up, up like this. 518, we're 129. Come on, baby, hit 130. 129.4.6. You can see steam coming out of the water. And remember, I guess, of course, nothing's insulated here, so it'll work even better once it's installed and insulated. There we go, 130. 130. And it is 150. So, pretty good. Put on the screen what the uh, actual temperature rise was, because I'll have to look at the video to remember. But that's how much it rose within 25 minutes. So, eight. Hey, I don't know how much BTUs I'm actually going to get out of this thing and how fast it's going to heat the water, but it will heat the water. It's real quiet. I forgot to take the amps at the final in there. Was it over 500? But I'm sure it was still under 8 amps at 115, which would be less than 4 equivalent, you know, 230. So you kind of 4 amps compared to almost 20 amps in your element in your water heater. This is That's why they stick these things. I've seen um, heat pump water heaters, and they stick a little tiny compressor and a coil like this, I don't even think they're that big. So this is an all as big as they probably use. They use little tiny shit compressors like that, you know, into a little coil, little coil for the evaporator and stick it right on top of the water heater. And then uh, that's, and then the, the thing is it's in an indoor room where they never expect it to get down to freezing or anything. So we don't get very cold here in Arizona, but we do get into the 40s, in and in the 30s, see how it works. But it wouldn't be hard for me to put a contactor in here on my heating element up there in the tank and two stages, some bitch. Yeah. Be awesome. So, anyway, all right, I'm gonna go ahead and shut this down. This is pretty awesome. Got that hot ass water in there. That is hot. That's about the flow rate right there. It would go faster if I tr open this valve up. See? So I actually did the test with it choked. Yeah. And my pump up here, which seemed to have, seems to not be pumping as much as it did originally. I already cut it clean out the clean out a little bit once, but I'm sure that it pumps at least what that was. What that choked. So anyway, that cool. We'll call this a success first compressor was not but something was wrong with that compressor clearly because all I did today was install another rotary compressor just a few BTUs less than that one because that's a the same brand I think DA 98 and this is a, a GA 086 if those numbers mean anything to you guys and eh, maybe it's not the same brand and sequence, but BTU wise, I think they're pretty close. Same everything I had hooked up yesterday. I took my pinch off tool and rounded that back out. So I mean, it's working perfectly with the capillary tubes and everything. So hope that video all came out good. So anyway, I call that a success. It works. So yeah.